Hi, my name is Jenny Whitener. I'm the CEO of Bridge Innovate. We are a global network of business strategists, consultants, and designers that team up with you to spark distinctive strategies, courageous leadership, and agile change. This special bonus podcast episode is designed to share valuable insights to support your leadership journey. And today we're going to be exploring harnessing conflict. When we think about conflict, one of the uh, areas that we go to is to look at some of the research that are coming in from folks who study this on an ongoing basis. Consider the work from Harvard Business Review on a recent report from them that talks about the fact that conflict can consume up to 40% of a manager's time. 40%, that's significant. Um, when you think about the fact that today, post-pandemic, people are working more remote and hybrid, that actually may be more in some circumstances because often working hybrid, a manager may not be aware of conflict that's in motion or they may not be aware of how serious the conflict is. So it's important for us as managers, as leaders of teams, to be aware of the tools and resources around conflict and to use them to best support our teams. In this study at Harvard Business Review, where they evaluated 1,000 first-time managers across 76 companies, they identified that 91% of conflict within organizations came from four major areas, communication differences, opaque performance standards, unreasonable time constraints, and unclear expectations. Interestingly enough, when you think of those four areas causing the most significant amount of conflict with teams, there are definitely things that can be managed by the leader and by the team members on the team. So let's dig in a little bit more with this study from Harvard Business Review. In the re research that they did, they found that there were four distinctive strategies that leaders could do to manage conflict and make it a productive element for the team. These four things were, number one, establish clear channels of communication. This is particularly important in today's environment with the great resignation and the great migration, talent have moved, different organization, different roles, different individuals now teaming together to establish these clear channels of communication up front as a part of the team launch, or maybe you're going to do it as a part of the kickoff of a new year, but make sure to mitigate conflict that you have these clear channels of communication established. Number two, be transparent about performance expectations. It's important for people to know what their expectations are for themselves as well as their other team members. Manage time expectations. Time is so critical. There's so much pressure for all of us today to do more in less time. Be clear about what your expectations are on time and what an individual can expect as being a part of the team. And last, according to Harvard, another major strategy for managing conflict is to clarify task and role expectations. So if we have a team working together, are you clear on what each member's of the team's role is and what the tasks are associated with those roles in order for the team to come together in a productive way. Those four areas, or four strategies, according to Harvard, um, can do great, can be great steps for moving you forward from an area of conflict that's disruptive to a conflict that's an advantage. Let's look at this topic a little um, more closely here at Bridge. We know that in working with leaders and teams across different industries and perspectives, that mastering conflict is a critical element of a high performing team. We use the great research uh, that came in from Patrick Lencioni with his work on the five dysfunctions of a team and then later the five behaviors of high performing teams. That becomes our anchor of research and tools as we work with teams here at Bridge to harness conflict into a productive environment for the team. In fact, when you think about this in more detail, uh, Lencioni shares a great pyramid that's built off of a lot of his work that shows that the most essential element for teams to be high performing is trust. Having that foundation of trust, nurturing trust, having established 
standards that, that uh, formulate an environment of trust is critical. The second most critical item for high performing teams is having productive ways of dealing with conflict. And today that's what we're talking about. You can see the other components of the five behaviors of top performing teams commitment, accountability, and results. So when we take all five of those and work them with teams here in our studio or working with our virtual studio on Sprint Base, we can help that team articulate the best practices and the norms and the tools that they will agree as a team across these dimensions, trust, conflict, commitment, accountability, and results to ensure that they have a great path forward to working together and achieving great outcomes for their organizations. We think about this, the benefits of addressing conflict are clear, right? And so it really is the leader's responsibility. Don't let this one slip by. Don't be fearful of conflict. The leader has to take it on and be the one who has the courage to bring it up at the team meeting to say, let's establish ways of having constructive conflict to bringing out diverse perspectives from across the team and be able to have good solid debate when we need it to ensure that we're going in the right direction and harnessing everything that there is to harness across the team to have the best outcome. The absence of conflict can lead to groupthink, where you're just really not taking advantage of different perspectives and complacency. Um, friction uh, can emerge if you don't have good tools for dealing with conflict that actually break down relationships. Also, when we get really good at nurturing conflict and diverse perspectives, it teaches us to learn about our colleagues, to value the perspectives of our colleagues better. And then overall, believe it or not, it can improve relationship and communications on teams by really having constructive ways of dealing with conflict. Here at Bridge, we go further and when we start working with a team on uh, exploring a productive way to engage in conflict. We use some psychometric assessments. Um, one of the most popular that we use is the Everything Disc Productive Conflict so that you learn not only your disc style, but you, you also learn your productive conflict style. It's a great quick instrument. You do it online before we get together in a workshop setting, either virtually or in person. So the team all has their results in front of them and they can use that as a catalyst to have this discussion around their each of their individual styles. The other thing we do is just to you know, invite the team to, to discuss it. Like how do they go about conflict and what is your personal orientation? Are you a spirited debater? Or are you a calm debater? Both can be effective. We just need to understand your styles. Let the team explore that across the team so that you can find the norm within your team so that conflict doesn't become a derailer, but conflict becomes an enabler for great work. We go further, we think about the conflict norms for your teams. We'd invite you as the leader to make it an agenda item on your team meeting. Talk about conflict. How do we make it a value? Something where we want diverse perspectives, we invite diverse perspectives, and what will be the tactics we'll use? At the meeting, will you ask for clarity on a recommendation and invite people to go further and asking an individual who's making a recommendation to also share the data and the rationale for their decisioning? Will you set up norms in a team meeting to say what's the the alternate path forward or what should we be considering that we're not considering so that you as a leader are inviting that diverse discussion as a part of the regular team meeting. The other things that you want to do when you're thinking about your role as a leader and harnessing conflict to your advantage is to embrace conflict as a component of the overall five best behaviors for high performing teams. Think about that trust foundation, go after these norms for productive conflict, inviting it, talking about it, valuing it, and then also um, building this concept of commitment, accountability, and results in that by having constructive conflict, inviting different views in a positive way 
that we can do our very best at delivering outstanding results. So make time for it in your team meetings and in your work efforts. Invest in training to equip your teams to have these conversations. One of the most um, I said, Im important models that we use in our conflict and teaming uh, workshops at Bridge is the SBI model. It's called Situation Behavior Impact. It's just giving a team a simple tool to be able to address a situation, to then say, here was the behavior I observed, and then to say, and here's the impact that it had. It takes something from being emotional into being a rational discussion and allowing two people to understand how a certain situation may have created a behavior and an impact that was uncomfortable for someone or not supportive of another individual. So these tools exist and it's important for leaders to bring these tools to their teams, especially in today's very highly volatile, um, very high speed business environment. It'll equip your team to be at their very best. So I hope some of the tips and tools that I've given you today on harnessing conflict um, as an advantage are um, helpful for you. Number one, as a leader, have the courage to bring it up. Number two, ensure that you discuss it and define its norms within your team. And if appropriate, invest further, looking at assessment instruments to unpack the different styles of conflict on your team and going through a team workshop uh, that can actually build the skills and the tools so that it becomes a positive environment for your team every day. If you'd like to know more about how to har harness conflict or to get a customized approach to working with your team, give us a call or contact us at Bridge Innovate, www.bridgeinnovate.com, and reach out to me, Jenny Whitener. I'm happy to talk with you. Thanks for joining us on today's special episode on harnessing conflict. We wish you and your, your teams the very best going forward, and we hope to see you again on another bonus episode on high-performing teams.